right, my good and beautiful people who are watching us in the video. Today, we're going to be talking about text structure, and we're specifically talking about nonfiction, uh, nonfiction organizational patterns. Lovely, isn't it? Mouthful. But you got this. What's nonfiction? Anybody? Reality. Reality, something that's real. So not, not fiction, all right, not fiction and how nonfiction is usually written, and so that's the organizational portion of it, how it is organized. Cool? Yeah. Awesome. All right. So how is the text organized? Well, all stories are chronological. Chronological in time usually, right? There's something happens before something else. Yeah? Nonfiction has a lot of um has a lot of text structures so how it is written and how it's structured so that it's it's a very heavy on text so each paragraph may be different right and there are five types that we will look at okay all right this is again what chronological means right chrono is time stories are told in chronological order so it is based on time then event one happens, then event two, then event three. Pretty simple, I think, right? If you're watching a movie, beginning, middle, end. Yeah? yeah? And it happens within a time frame. Okay? Born in 1882, married in 1906, and died in 1946. That is the timeline and the chronolo uh, chronological order. Okay? So let's do this. All right. So uh, sequence and orders of importance. We have a step by a steps that describe the orders in which they occur. So for example, put on the shoes, make two loops, tie the loops together, tighten the laces. That's how you tie your shoes, right? So again, there is a sequence or the order of importance. Which of these events had to happen before the other one, right? Which sequence did they follow? The first thing you put on your shoes. You don't tie your shoes without putting them on. So you have to tie. You have to put them on first, and then you make the loops, and then you tie in your laces, and so forth. So a sequence is one, two, three, four. Right? How this happens in which order? Okay. Again. Get bread. Open jar. Spread peanut. Spread the jelly. Combine slices and enjoy, right? Step one, two, three, four, five. And it does not, in this case, when we're talking about a, a sequence, it doesn't have a specific uh, time, a point in time. So it doesn't have a certain time, a certain timeline, right? Whereas chronological order has to have a timeline. Thing one has to happen before thing two, right? In terms of time. Ah, this is too much. All right, let me end the slideshow and then we'll go this way. All right, how is it gonna do the same? Okay, so if you look at the previous slide in chronological order, you had to have a timeline. Yes, event one happened before event two, but this is in terms of time, whereas sequence, does, it, the time doesn't matter. It's irrelevant for us, okay? Um, cause and effect is another one of the nonfiction writing styles, and it explains reasons why something happened, or it explains the effect of something happening, which we talked about. There's an entire video on, um, on cause and effect. If you are watching online, you can go ahead and check it out. If you are here in class, you just heard the lecture, you can also uh, go ahead and check it out later. All right. So the other one is cause and effect. And I believe this is number four, which is problem and solution. This is another type of uh, non-fictional organizational writing, right? The way it's organized, okay? So the author states the problem and then the solution, and it's very similar to cause and effect, but it is rather you, you portray the problem and then you provide a solution, right? So eagles are endangered, what do we do as a result of eagles being endangered? We make laws to protect them. 
So basically, cause and effect with an opinion. All right, and an answer. Okay, so uh, compare and contrast. Again, we talked about comparing and contrasting earlier as well uh, in another video. Compare is to find the similarities and contrast is to find the differences. And so you want to show what in common, what are some things in common? We've used charts before, we've used the Venn diagram. This is another chart that you can do. Apples and oranges alike, they are fruits, they have seeds, they're healthy, differences, the color, the taste, and the location in which they are grown, yeah? So again, what we are, hi what we are highlighting now is the five types of text structure, the way that text is actually organized, all right? So we have chronological, sequence or order of importance, cause and effect, problem and solution, compare and contrast, and um, those, are, those are the five that are the major ones that you have, okay? And again, in a given non-fictional uh, test, uh, sorry, text, you can have multiples of these structures, right? It's not just one, you know, maybe in a paragraph, you present the cause and the fact, right? Why this is happening uh, as a result of what? In the next paragraph, you take that, you know, cause and you say, okay, well, that's the problem and this is the solution I'm providing. And then you compare and contrast what is happening, right? So in one singular text, of course, you don't have to do that. It's not always that they do that, but in a non-fictional text, that is something that is possible writing in multiple structures whereas in fiction if you're writing a poem you're writing a poem if you're writing a novel you're writing a novel it's usually not mixed does that make sense if you're writing a story a short story it's a short story it's not an it's not a long novel right it's not a chapter book mm -hmm. does that make sense Perfect. All right. So practice. Um, you can do that. You can. We're gonna start easy, but it's gonna get a little bit harder. We're gonna read the paragraph. We're gonna identify the text structure, and then we're going to write it down. Okay. Not the paragraph, but what you think the, the structure is. Okay. Sounds good. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. All right. I'm getting zero enthusiasm. For those of you who are watching, I'm getting zero <laughs> enthusiasm from these people. All right. Okay. So delivered eggs. Pop out, remove the egg yolk into a small bowl, mash with a fork. Add mayonnaise, mustard powder, vinegar, and uh, salt and pepper, and mix thoroughly. Fill the empty eggs, uh, egg white shells with mixture and sprinkle lightly with paprika. Cover lightly with a plastic wrap and refrigerate for up to one day before serving. I just realized that that says deviled eggs after I read. Yeah, I read the entire recipe. I'm like, this is deviled eggs. Why is it saying delivered eggs? Then I reread it. Okay, so this is how you make deviled eggs. What do you guys think it is? Yeah, it's a sequence. The order is of importance. You have to do what you have to do, right? You have to get the eggs. You have to put them in a bowl. If you're putting the mustard and the mayonnaise and the, the, the vinegar powder somewhere else, well, it's not deviled eggs anymore. All right, so that's what it is. Sports at Ericsson's. There are two popular sports played at Ericsson, basketball and volleyball. Both take place inside the gym at Ericsson. Also, each sport has two teams of people. In basketball, however, the ball can be played off, off, off the floor. And in volleyball, the ball cannot touch the floor or it is out of play. Basketball and volleyball are popular sports at Ericsson. Compare and contrast. We have the similarities that they're both at this place and the differences in how they are played. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Cool, my people. The lazy student, otherwise known as George. I'm kidding. I don't have a name. I don't have a student named George. George is my brother. And he's not lazy. He's pretty cool. But yeah. And George it is. So the lazy student, aka George. Uh, when Tim woke up, he didn't want to go to school. Oh, apparently it's Tim. You guys, it's not George. It's Tim. Okay. 
So when Tim woke up, he didn't want to go to school. His mom took him away, and his mom took him anyway. So he went to school, but he didn't do any work. The days passed, and Tim still didn't do any work. Mr. Morton called Tim's house, but Tim still wouldn't do any work. Finally, the report card came out, and Tim failed his class. Tim was sad. What do you guys think? It's not, it's not problem solution. There's no solution. Oh, order. Or he failed. It's chronological order, right? Right? He didn't want to wake up. She woke him up. She took, she then took him to school, right? They had to happen in order, right? The days passed. He called his house. Tim didn't care. He failed the class. He was sad, right? So chronological order. It's the story. All right, failing classes. Look at all these students failing classes. What do we know? Lots of students fail classes. Some students fail because the work is too hard for them. Other times they fail, they may fail because they are lazy and don't do any work. Another reason why students may fail is if they don't go to school, uh, if, if they don't go to school. If you're not in your class, you, miss, you may miss a lot. Many students fail classes every quarter. What do you guys think? Is that cause and effect? Um, no, that could be cause and effect, actually. Because of this, that happens. All right. Passing classes, yay! That's what we want. That's the spirit. A lot of students have been failing classes. These students wouldn't be failing classes if they studied more, asked questions, tried harder, and came in for extra help. Even though a lot of students fail classes, they have many options if they want to pass. What do we think? There's a problem and there is a solution. That is exactly it. Problems and solutions. All right. Devers ex experienced the highlight of any sprinter's career as she stood in the huge platform in a giant stadium and received an Olympic gold medal. 18 months earlier, she wasn't thinking about running. She was hoping that she would be able to walk again. Just four years earlier, in the summer of 1988, as Devers was training for the Olympics, uh, for the Olympic Games, to be held in Seoul, South Korea, she began to feel very tired all the time and failed to make the Olympic finals. What do you guys think? Huh? Uh, not necessarily. Chronological. It's the story, right? It's a real story, non-fiction story, but it's a story nonetheless, and stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Okay? I didn't write this. Oh, for the record, I didn't write this, uh, and I will post it in, thanks for reminding me. I'll post it in the link, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's probably a typo. Um, yeah. Okay. Three types of circus clowns. Uh, yeah. Okay. I was going to make a, a stupid joke, but moving on. <laughs> Generally, there are three categories of circus clowns, white face, August, and character. Each has a specific style of makeup and costume, and each has a typical act as well. The neat white face is usually a strict, in charge character who sets up the punchline for the joke with a partner. His facial expressions are neatly detailed in red or black. Circus Legends, oops, sorry. Circus Legends has it that the August Clown got his name from a German nickname for someone who is clumsy. The August wears the light colored, the light colored makeup, but white is used around the mouth and the eyes, and three big red, red, and there's a big red nose. This clown performs a great deal of slapstick humor. And finally, we have character clowns, and character clown is different, uh, performs as different personalities, cowboys, scarecrows, grandmothers, or symphony conductors. The most famous character, oh, let me put this down. The most famous character clown, however, is the tramp. Tramps wear different styles of makeup and costumes that are torn or shabby. Some tramp clowns are very happy-go-lucky, Others are extremely sad. Still, others act like gentlemen who just happened to be out of money. What do you guys think? Compare and contrast. Easy breezy. 
right? All right, number eight, how to use a microscope, plug in the lamp, place the sample of what you wish to observe on the slide, adjust the mirror to reflect the light, it, so it reflects the light from the room up in the objective lens, and it is all numbered, you guys. What do you guys think it is? It is not chronological order. It is sequence. Sequence, okay? It's the sequence of events, right? It's like when you're creating a recipe, right? When you're tying your shoes, one, two, step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, right? So these are the steps that are there. Cool, sequence of events. Chronological is a story. Whenever you hear a story about someone, that is a chronological order. The only thing is that it's real, it's not fake. Whereas Cinderella is fake, um, you know, athletes in the Olympics are not. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's just the real story in a nonfiction chronological order. Okay, which means it happened, there was a beginning, middle, and end. It's, it happened over a period of time. Sequence doesn't happen over a period of time. It doesn't matter when you use this. This is how you use a microscope. It doesn't matter if it's three years ago, today, or in three years. This is it. Yeah? Okay. Uh, fewer toads, though, though, to uh, though toads are still around, they no longer are common in some areas as they were a few decades ago. The growing, uh, the growing use of insecticide, insecticides has reduced their number. The chemical sprays usually do not harm toads, but cut down the animal's food supply, therefore, uh, thereby the toads do not have enough food to survive. There are fewer toads in many areas populated by Cause and effect. Sounds about right, right? Something's happening to cause something else to happen. All right. We're almost done, All right? Dr. Knapp, or yeah, Knapp, doesn't want people to sit back and let the toad vanish. He believes that everyone is responsible for restoring the toad species. Dr. Knapp thinks, thinks we could help restore the toad population if we stop moving parts of our lawn, mowing parts of our lawn and let the grass grow wild to reserve space for the toad. He also believes we need to stop using pesticides and fertilizers. The chemical, chemicals kill the insects that toads eat. If we preserve more spaces in our lawns and stop using fertilizers, Dr. Knapp believes that we can save the toads. What do we think? Problem solutions. problem solutions yeah that's it it's problems and solutions all right these were the answers of what we had cool my people that is it for this video if you're watching make sure to subscribe and if uh, you're here you can always ask me any questions that you want